We are back with Avengers and uh, a different background. This is podcast number, we don't know, but it's three in a series of four. It's a podcast, vodcast, vidcast, call it what you like, cast. But it's certainly about Jay Soccer, the magazine, the editor, the president. Hello, Mr. President. How are you today? Hello, Mr. Mr. You can call me Prime Minister. Mr. Actually. Prime Minister. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. Yes, I'm fine, yeah. thank you. Hey, check me the shirts. Aren't these shirts nice? Oh, yes, check out these shirts. I mean, lovely. It's... The Japan National Team shirt. A, the authentic version with the all support for Japan logo in there, which you can't, you can just about see that. Yeah, you can make it This out. is the export version with the embroidered badge there. And blah, blah, blah. No, they're not for sale. I'm wearing the Olympic shirt. It could Japan be for decided to go red. Oh. And uh, no JFA, none of this JFA stuff on the Olympic shirt for some reason. I'm not sure what, it, what it's all about, but uh, we're not allowed to wear them. Yeah. So we've gone for the Hinomaru. I digress. Sorry, go ahead. We're going for the one, the, the Kinomaru. The Hinomaru. Hinomaru. <laughs> what, what is that? Sorry, it sounds like it's a vegetable. The Japanese Hinomaru. The name of the Japanese national flag. It's called Hinomaru. Hinomaru. Uh, Hinomaru. Let's not get political okay. on this. Let's not. Vidcast, podcast, YouTube. But let's talk about Freddy Lundberg. Freddy. he adorns the cover of issue two. And um, why? Well, he was playing for Espos. And, and uh, made a big impact? Quite a bit of excitement uh, created at Espos before he just nipped off and mm. buggered off somewhere else. I did get to meet Freddy. In fact, the picture in issue three, there's a picture of me with Freddy. There you go, Freddy, looking very uh, dapper. And in fact, I'm wearing a suit there too. You don't get that very often. And um, yeah, I met but Freddy. You're not wearing a beret. He seemed like a nice boy. Did he, did he have a beret? So she, you know, yeah, sort of for a, you. a beret type thing, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lung berry. And you didn't ask for one? No, I didn't ask him to give me a berry, no. no. He didn't give me one, no. Okay. Well, I'm glad to hear it, because I don't think it would suit you. But, what can we say about the magazine? I mean, there's, on, a, on a very sad note, of course, uh, a celebration of the career of Naoki Matsuda. And uh, you had the pleasure of meeting him. I did meet mm. him quite often. He yeah. was uh, always gave 100%, believe me. Yeah. Uh, Ken Matsushima of the Rising Sun News wrote this great article on Naoki, the fighter. Uh, you can also see uh, Matsuda's shirt behind us, of course. There's a number three. That's uh, Naoki's number for Japan and for the Yokohama Marinos. Um, yeah, he uh, collapsed on the field in training of his new team, and uh, he was gone within days. It was a tragedy, and of course, it's happened recently in England with the... Uh, Bolton Wanderers, Fabrice Mwamba, who thankfully survived and uh, will be back on the field soon if uh, all stories are to be believed. Mm. And there's a, a real Miyagi connection there, isn't it? But let's not go into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's not. But talking of uh, J League legends, uh, you've got a special also on, uh, how do you say his name? Is it Wagner Lopez or is it Wagner Lopez? I'm not sure how they say that. Wagner Lopez. Yeah, that kind of sounds right. So um, what, what, a, what kind of article is, is it? That's something that's interesting. Because I can't find it. <laughs> it's an interesting story. That oh, it's can. a very interesting story. There he is, the J League legend, Wagner Lopez. Uh, Tiago Bontempo in Brazil uh, tracked down uh, Lopez, who uh, played for Japan in that 1997 game that we mentioned previously, uh, when Japan beat Iran. Um, he was a Brazilian who arrived in Japan long ago, uh, got national citizenship, uh, played for th four or five teams, played for the national team, did wonderfully well. Uh, went back to Brazil and was coaching in Brazil and we tracked him down and actually in the article it says uh, and I quote the goal of my life today is to do a good job as a coach and have the opportunity to go back to Japan and help rebuild what was lost in the tsunami and well it was an exclusive because three or four months later there he was shocking everybody by becoming a manager of Gamba Osaka then there were problems because mm. he hadn't got the right uh, t technical qualifications uh, so uh, they brought in a figurehead above him, above him, but uh, mm. and uh, apparently there were problems because the figurehead was not in charge. Wagner Lopez was in charge. Uh, Gamba lost their first five games, and the rest is history. Bye bye, Mr. Lopez. Sayonara, ciao. Sayonara, baby. It's so Julian Tokyo. So my exclusive was, you know, pretty good and nicely an exclusive. And the follow-up was about to be in issue four, but he's no longer with us. So uh, never mind, eh? Well, moving on, I was, uh, I was trying to think of a tenuous link, but I kind of couldn't think of one, really. Can't but think of a link. <laughs> let's just say tactics. I was going to say shock tactics, and these, these tactics are not shocking at all. But why is it in the magazine? Um, why do you feel the need to um, Did you let know? people know about it? Well, 
Ja think Japanese it's... football, uh, the J League is only 20 years old this year, and mm. Japanese football is, uh, the fans are not very technical, not very knowledgeable in, in history. Uh, they are the most fervent of fans and the most technically brilliant fans. They love everything these days, but back in time, I mean, Japan has never had uh, a goalkeeper. Uh, number one, a right back number two, a left back number three, a centre back number five, a centre forward number nine. They, I, was, I figured they might not even know the origin of the numbers. Now, of mm. course, we in England know all about that. Or so we think. Yeah, well. And we had quite a lengthy discussion about it. Actually, we? We maybe I should We promised we wouldn't have a lengthy discussion on this podcast. Maybe I should say. I can we, see where this is We going. older guys know all about the numbers. Yeah. But the younger people, perhaps in, in Europe, uh, America, whatever, they actually don't know that the... Uh, the numbers actually mean something. Yeah. Or used to. Used to have a meaning. In so the I figured, days. you know, we'll get a bit of educational too. But then, the you get, then you get guys like William Gallus getting a number 10 shirt and playing at the back, which kind of destroys yes, it all. And yes. the squad numbers, of course, have changed, changed the meaning of those numbers. Exactly. The squad numbers have changed the meaning of numbers. There are no meanings to numbers anymore, although uh, there are some meanings. For example, uh, how about uh, a player that takes number 18? He's actually in his head wearing number nine because he's got a little plus between the one and the eight. Oh. You know, and... Uh, Who's that? Oh, Joe. Oh, I'm sorry. Into Milan, Zamoran, or took to 18 yeah. because the number nine was already gone. And he's got a little plus. In, yeah, well, he hasn't that. now because he's retired now. Oh. But he was oh, the first one. one. He was the first one to have that little plus. See, I wasn't aware of that. And then uh, there's various players all around the world who have actually started doing that. Mm. And um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Bando Ryuji. Ryuji Bando, mm. number 11. Number 11, his favourite number, 11, is the number 11 for uh, Seles Osaka right now. He played for the Japan national team, mm. took number 74. Do you know why? You're going to tell me. 7 plus 4 is 11. Aha, uh -huh. very and clever. And Futagawa of Gamba Osaka played for the national team once and chose number 55. He always plays number 10 for Gamba. Mm. Wow, 5 plus 5 is 10. Sorry, we well, yeah, we're digressing. We're really digressing, <laughs> and I'm, I knew this was a mistake to talk anyway, about. Anyway, you people are listening. What do you think about numbers? Do you know guys who've chosen a particular number because of its meaning, or because of some meaning that you know we're not sure about? Send us a comment at the bottom of this, or Alan at jsoga.com. Drop yeah. me a line. Yeah, and try and keep it polite. You yes, don't deserve please, it. Please, please, please keep it polite. What about Tokyo Verde? They were, they were polite, probably. Uh, the best team in the land at one point. Well, Tokyo Verde have never been uh, best. In fact, as They've the never uh, been the best. as the writer of this says, I Tokyo thought they Verde, were the best. Tokyo Verde were brilliant. It was uh, actually a nice title, I thought. So uh, yet yeah, long ago, the Yomiuri Club was the best team in Japan. Mm. Uh, certainly, the uh, most successful in the number of cups and trophies, etc. Along with Nissan FC, who became Yokohama Marinos. Um, the Verde moved around. Uh, if you go back uh, one podcast or vidcast or whatever we're calling this. And have a listen, you'll find out the story of the, how they're moving around. But now they are Tokyo Verdi, and they're back in Tokyo. And one of the other great things about this particular issue is you're getting to learn Japanese. Look, Hajime Mashite, even I can say that. Hajime Mashite. I often say it at the wrong wrong point. Well, time. you see, that's a punish, You can only yeah. say that when you first meet someone, That's right? right. On the first occasion, you say, It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Hajime Mashite. Hajime Mashite. So what's he doing in the magazine? Well, Hosso guy Hajime, that's the guy's name, Hajime. Ah, so I thought, words there. Hajime Master. I thought that was pretty clever, you know. And that's I your best I, headline today. I think at least three people around the world have appreciated <laughs> that. Thing. All right. So, it was something else I was definitely going to ask you about, and I can't find it now. The Pride of Shikoku. Tokushima. Tokushima Vortis. Tokushima Vortis. The interesting story. It was a very good story last year. They, uh, they, have a, they had, he resigned, they had a manager called Minobe Naohiko who was a great manager, played for Gamba Osaka about 20 years ago. And uh, he took this team from a, a middling team of Division Two to almost the final day they lost out on a J1 place. And, and it would have been great because they're from the west of Japan, which is not so successful, a small team on an mm -hmm. island back down in Tokushima. It would have been a very nice uh, Cinderella story. In fact, it was an, almost a Cinderella story. But Tokushima Vortis, well, maybe they got another chance this year. Yeah, let's hope so. I think uh, you were indicating we're running out of time, so we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you again soon. And uh, what do we say? We say, get in touch right. at alan at jsoccer.com. No, A-L-A-N right. at jsoccer.com. Right. The, the Loose Cannon. The Loose Cannon. .co.uk. Joe's website, The Loose mm -hmm. Cannon. 
The Loose Cannon. I think it is. The hmm. Loose Cannon. Dot co. I can't dot UK. Myself, Joe Broadfoot. Yeah. Alan Gibson, president and editor of JSucker Magazine. Look at jsucker.com or give me a take two. Drop me a line at alan at jsucker.com. That's A L A N at jsucker.com. Bye. Bye. Bye.